Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Bite Podcast with Raven and Re. I'm your host, Raven. And I'm your host, Re. And today, we have a very special episode for you guys. We're going to be talking about the hybrid children of all the universes in this that we that we know of. <laughs> But before, fantasy. yeah. But before we get to that, let's talk about Thanksgiving a little bit because Thanksgiving just passed. It did. did you have so a good how one? is? Yeah, we had we 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 ate food. <laughs> I felt a little sick, but I was like, yeah. I I started taking new medication that my doctor prescribed, and it takes a while to get used to it. So um, it made my tummy hurt a little. So I was there like, oh, I like drink bubbly because it helps like. With yeah. my stomach, but yeah, so it was um it was it was but it was a fun time. Um, what about you? It was fun. Um, mainly did nothing throughout the day except watch TV, and then um, my mom started cook. My mom usually cooks early in the day, but we didn't do as many sides this year, so she started later. So we had a more late of a dinner than what we normally do. Yeah, we always have a dinner Thanksgiving. We never do like um like breakfast or lunch or anything. Yeah. We do like snacks um for like lunch cuz it's football, so my pa- my dad and brother are watching football. <laughs> but yeah, and then we played cards against humanity after we cleaned up, which was Oh, that's fun. A fun sight. <laughs> that is fun. Oh my goodness. We out we played cards against humanity too. Oh my <laughs> I didn't even re- you said kind of anything. I was like, oh my god, how fun! And then I just remember that we were playing too. We played I for a that. long time. Yeah, that game can go on for hours. It can. I wanted to get to the point where we finished like the all the black deck cards, yes. but I just feel like it's never endless. Yeah, my parents don't like the cards that have like two, so we always have to skip them because we my always we don't get we them. took them. We took them out of the deck. <laughs> yes. We don't like those. <laughs> That's so funny. Okay, well, um, so we can talk about the hybrid children of the Twilight universe, since that's like the first one. And the first one that we really know of is Renesmee. Yes. And now, I can now pronounce it's now well. Na- Nahuel? Na- Nahuel? Nahuel, yeah. yeah. I think I heard Him. Cherish pronounce it one time, like, beautifully, and I'm like, oh, I wish. Yeah, I forgot how you say that. Not well, not well, not well. But yeah, so they are vampire human hybrid. So obviously we know that Renesmee is her mom was the human Bella and then her dad was the vampire. Yeah. And she got Bella got impregnated by Edward through his venom because his venom I remember in Cherish's podcast they were talking about the stuff and they really helped me understand if you guys haven't checked out cherish's podcast it's called twilight sleuth so oh, definitely love, go check that I out love their podcast i i love it it's so funny um but they talked about how they well they kind of cracked the code on how vampire the the reason that edward could get bella pregnant was because the the vampire um venom is like used as whatever the um the vampire like n- is like needed kind of like how yeah. like when edward cries he's not really crying tears he's crying like venom and stuff yeah. like that yeah it like substitutes as whatever fluid it needs to yeah because they, they they said it, it like kind of compares to like um how like the vampire has like venom running through their veins instead of blood so it kind of yeah. like just replaces whatever liquid humans have so and then, um, and then we know that Renesme is gifted, but we don't know if Nahu Nahuel or Nahuel is gifted. Yeah, um, there's not. I was looking at his um, his section in the illustrated guide, which I highly mm-hmm. recommend. If nobody's ever had, like, if you haven't read it, I highly recommend it. It really gives an insight of all the different characters and all the different. Um, things within the twilight universe and his didn't have much it just indicated that he has three sisters and he is the only one that's venomous none of his sisters are and um which is interesting because renezme is also not venomous because mm-hmm. she bit bella and nothing had happened yeah so it says here that 
Um, I'm looking on um, the Twilight Saga wiki, like the wiki fandom thing. Mm. It says that um, um, that he has three half sisters: Serena, Jennifer, and Mason. Like M A Y S U N. That's cute. Aww. Oh, that's cute because Edward's last name or Edward's original last name was Mason, right? So May Sun is that's cute, and they show traits of both species um, conception. So the whole process is extremely risky and can easily fail due to the fragile human body. And uh, Nahuel's mom didn't survive, right? Yeah, yeah. His um the way the guide said, and I think also in Breaking Dawn, he his mom didn't make it through childbirth, and then his aunt um was there to help her and that's when the baby had bit her and mm-hmm. transformed yeah and yeah because he is the only one who is venomous because if anyone else had bit them nothing would have happened yeah um so it says here that because most vampires have a hard time resisting the urge to kill humans for their blood it takes a high level of self-control to be so close to the human and still resist the temptation i guess like they're they're um that most vampires, like, I guess in the Twilight universe at least, would turn them even because, like, if they're intimate in that way, they, they're so close yeah. to, to them, so it's hard, harder to resist the temptation to bite them. Um, yeah, so, like, their father did it four times because yeah. he's got three half-sisters, so it's like, he, may, he must have some intent. Hence, self control to be able to do that with four other women and impregnate yeah. them. Yeah. Yeah. And then Edward, well, and then we see that from Edward too with the super self control because, I mean, especially because Bella's blood was so strong to him and he was able to kind of control that in the moment. Yeah. Um, so then it says that the fetuses in the twilight for the vampire human fetus, they grow extremely fast and strong. Um, Bella was pregnant how long? I think a month. Um, They got married on August 13th. She must have... It was probably... um, Renesmee was conceived within the first night. Because they only, I think, did it two times. Mm -hmm. And then by the time it was up to the birth, she was already at, like, nine months. Yeah, because, yeah, because they were there for two weeks... No, she didn't get her her cycle. And then they went back after those two, after she was like, oh, I'm late. Two weeks, they went back to Forks um, or to the Cullen house. And then I guess she was there for two weeks longer. And then she had, so really she did like nine months of growing in a span of, um, in a month, which is crazy. Yeah. And then it's, you know, she did, they didn't know that, her drinking blood could have helped with her health at the time. So I think it was, what, three weeks she was pregnant that she, you know, she didn't feed on any blood. So that's why she was more fragile because mm-hmm. Renesmee was craving um, the blood. Yeah. And then um, I, I, I was going to say, I think the movies do a good job at making those last two weeks where she comes back from from the honeymoon seemed like a super long time even though it wasn't that long at all yeah i really even though breaking dawn part one is one of my least favorite of the movies i definitely think it's one of the best like time wise mm-hmm. yeah they do a really good job at that um so then um it says the fetus has grown to a full to full full term in one month um and that it'll use its own strength and teeth to break its way out, like Renesmee was doing to Bella. Um, I that makes insane. that makes me think that they couldn't they couldn't have taken her out any sooner, right? Because they said that the the M like the uterus wall or whatever was happening was like too strong. Yeah. yeah, like they couldn't even. Oh my they god! They couldn't that even scene break when through he it. He bites his way through the embryonic sac. I was like, oh, what? Yeah. Okay, so then the physiology, it says that they have both human vampire traits. We know that a Renesmee can survive off of food and vampire blood. Like, there's no... Yeah, she... 
She's got um, her mom's eyes. And then I think she's got like a combination of their hair because she has like Bella's kind of brownish hair, but it has like the reddish tint that Edward mm-hmm. has. Yeah. Um, and we, we don't we don't know how long really. Well, I know that Nahuel is older. He's like a hundred and something years old. But we don't really know, like, if, if like, what it goes beyond past that, really. Because I guess he's, like, the first one. Yeah. So, a lot of things with them are unknown. Like, are they are they indefinitely immortal, like, like, like normal vampires? That's what I wonder. And especially because he managed to go so long under the Voltori's radar. I, it, I mean... Because he looked, um, I, I don't know if he's described as, he averagely looked like he was in his 20s. Mm-hmm. Was it? Yeah. yeah I think so. they said that he stopped growing at the age of seven. Like, he was full grown at the age of seven. And he looked like he was probably, like, 20-something, I, I, I would say. Yeah, um, and we see the thing that Stephanie Meyer can look into in the upcoming book she's writing. Yeah, because, yeah, because it's going to be a Renesmee point of view, right? Yeah. Um, so it says that the hybrid's heart beats faster than a human's heart. They are capable of sleeping and getting nourishment from both human and f- human food and blood. I think if honestly, like if I were to be like a part of this like universe, I don't think I would want to be full vampire. I think I'd rather be a hybrid. Only because I feel like Same I like sleep. <laughs> I like sleeping. <laughs> that yeah, that that's because so. uh, um, shy. I a uh, shy when she did her TVD um versus Twilight this or that. She had said like, would you rather eat or drink or sparkle in the sunlight? And I'm like, because the Vampire Diaries vampires get to eat and drink. And I'm like, oh, I want to eat and drink. Yeah, I'd rather be. I'd rather be like that. I can't, I can't and give I, up. I can't give up. I can't give up. But in the Vampire Diaries, they don't sleep either, right? No. No, right? I think the only like- person I think the only person who slept was Caroline when she was pregnant with the um, twins. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Other than that, I don't. I don't think so. Um, his oldest sister. Okay, so it says here that. Um, Nahuel has lived about 150 years with still a young body. His older sister, Serena, is known to have lived for over two centuries. So, they will, they, they are pretty old. I guess they, they are pretty normal. I, I don't know. I feel like, um, I, I guess since they're like hybrids, they're like part human and they have all these, they can do all these things that like humans can do. I would just assume that they would like, there has to, I feel like there's like a, like a, time stamp or something like i don't know yeah because i mean the oldest vampire that we know of is in the twilight universe is who um it hints in the illustrated guy that the egyptian coven could be older than the voltori okay so and then they're they're probably like a couple hundred centuries old if not more so um Obviously, they're stronger and faster than humans. I feel like um, that Renesmee, we're going to, I feel like we're going to see her in like a high, like high school in the next book. And I think that she might get along with I a lot of people. Want that. I want to see, I want to see high school Renesmee. She just has that essence. She does. And I think that, I think that it's going to, I think that she's going to, um, thrive in high school for some reason because it just says like they're they don't sparkle in the sun but they like look extra beautiful in the sun and imagine like just looking extra beautiful in the sun like how many like high school boys she's like have like fighting for her love yeah you know edward taught her the piano so she's probably gonna i feel like i can see her in high school being a part of um the arts the performing arts so like Mm -hmm. music theater yeah, I think that that I think that that is is something that I can see them do. Um, especially, I, I don't know. I just feel like um, I feel like she would have a lot of friends. If that makes sense, 
Um, I not I don't want to say that she's like opposite of Bella, but I kind of see her as opposite of Bella in a way. Yeah. Um, like I feel like she'll be kind of maybe more outgoing, even though they're both they're both Virgos that we talked about our last episode. <laughs> yeah, she could. Yeah, I could see her that being kind of an omnivert where she is very outgoing and social and enjoys time with her friends, but also someone who likes to kick back and maybe enjoy a good book like Bella. Yeah, for sure. It says here, too, that also um, that the that Renesmee is the only hybrid to have shown supernatural gifts, which she had inherited from both parents. So that makes me wonder um, if we I know we had talked about. Oh, and actually, no, we didn't talk about Cherish talked about, I think, the supernatural gifts being inherited, possibly. Yeah. So. (laughs) You've read Midnight Sun, right? I'm almost done. <laughs> oh, ah, dang it. Okay, where are you at? Uh, I'm like way more than halfway. I don't even know where my book's at. To Oh, it's like way up there. But uh-huh. you can you can tell me because my friend has talked to me about... About, about it? About things, yeah. Okay, so this is kind of a mini spoiler. Um, so as we know, Midnight Sun is from Edward's point of view. And he can read everyone's thoughts but Bella's. Well... When the when he first met Charlie, he noticed how his thoughts were kind of off. Whereas Bella's, he couldn't hear any thoughts. With Charlie, it was kind of it was it was a it was I forget how he describes it, but he kind of said that Charlie had these thoughts where he couldn't really pick up on them. Like he could. Oh, hear like it was like radio signals. I remember. Yeah, and then so, and then with Renee. How Renee was someone who, um, can, like, when he, he felt that with Renee after, during the hospital scene after the incident with James, Renee was very kind of, you know, in distraught with Bella, and he could see how her emotions affected the people around her to where it brought them toward her and, like, wanted to help her. And he, mm. so he felt that Renee probably had a similar gift to Jasper's, but different in a way where, um, if she would have been a vampire, she could easily manipulate people's, like, um, emotions to do what, like, in order to benefit her. And, um, and then with Charlie... Oh, that would be, that that would be a cool gift. Yeah. And then with Charlie, how he couldn't hear, um, his thoughts so much as to Bella's, he kind of, it's kind of hinted that Charlie could have been a possible shield, which is why Bella's is so strong because she inherited it. And then we yeah. see with Renezme, her powers are the opposite of both of her parents. That is yeah. Which <laughs> because she can Oh my god, I remember I did a TikTok on that cuz so many people were um commenting on my one video that went viral where I was showing this ending scene because um I had said that Bella dropped her shield, which is how it's described in the book how she she pushes it away she describes as pushing it away how she was removing it in order for him to read her mind but everybody in my comments were kind of like i'm pretty sure she's projecting it and i'm like oh, she cannot project her thoughts her yeah mind, no it's not her mind is so strong and so i had to like explain the difference between because they were thinking that bella and renesme had the same power and i was like no it's the no. opposite yeah it is cuz bella can let her guard like let her shield down but Renesme can project like things that she's seen and thoughts and stuff like that yeah i find it so, really cool how Renesme's power is the opposite of both of her parents yeah cuz they're both they're both um not that edwards is like guarded but it's like kind of like in his head type of thing yeah. whereas like Ren- Renesme's is like out like projecting outward yeah um so I was going to say that um, that it makes sense for Renesmee to have powers because both of her parents are extremely gifted and like have have powers. And then um, that then that just says that maybe um, Nahuel's and and his and his sisters, his dad is not like gifted. Yeah. Um, and I guess like maybe his parents just weren't either or his his mom, you know, their parents, their moms. Yeah. But, oh man, it just <laughs> now it makes me wonder what um a child of like Jasper and Alice would be. 
That would be crazy. Oh, that would be so cool. If only, if only the vampires could have babies still. I know. Oh, I wish. Because Renez, uh, not Renez, me. Um, <laughs> um, Rosalie would love that if the, if if they could have babies. Give her a baby. Evan would need... be such a great dad. He would. He'd be so silly and funny, and iconic. Um, and then, so then, uh, that's why I would, I, we talked about it previously in a couple episodes ago that for sure that the Voltory would be trying to create their own hybrid children. Oh yeah. I definitely like they, see Aro using it to his advantage cause he's, he, we, when we talked about, you know, in Zodiacs, how his, what did we say he was? He was what? An Aquarius or he was oh, something. I he will. I forgot. I know. Oh, uh, huh? What is what is Carly? She's an mm. Aquarius. Yes, that was that's what <laughs> we it said. Was. He was an Aquarius. Shout out to Carly. We love you. No hate <laughs> on Aquariuses. Um, but um, Aro would be someone who would use that new gifted knowledge to his advantage, and I definitely think he would make his gifted vampires do it so like dimitri felix Mm -hmm. has hella strength so i don't know i don't know if they would want to do it with felix i think if maybe they found like a mom who was like who had like some crazy power like something that was like stronger than i guess what felix would be um that it would be cool because it would be cool to see if maybe like his gift of being extremely strong would make the babies come out like with their whatever their mother's power is but like extra like extra yeah so that's af i think okay santiago doesn't have a mate afton is the mate of chelsea and he has the gift of invis that ooh, i wonder what would have been like if chelsea and afton had a baby because he can like mentally and make him invisible to people and then she has the influence on emotional ties well, I feel like that would be something crazy. Well, see, and then also, I feel like if Carlisle and Esme had a baby, their baby would just be, like, super extra compassionate. Like, the, oh, like, the sweetest the sweet, baby ever. The sweetest. That, oh. Anyway, I feel, oh. And then I feel like Rosalie and Emmett's baby would just be, like, a crackhead. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh, my gosh. I've, if they had a son, would be carbon copy of Emmett. And then I could see the daughter having, like, still a bit of silliness like Emmett, but also very serious like her mom. Mm-hmm. Jasper and Alice's child would be... I, I, I can't see their child not being 100% Alice. Because her energy is just so yeah. radiant that it would pass on. I Yeah, I, I can see their child being, like, those little, like... Like, fairies, like, roaming in the woods and just, like, frolicking. <laughs> oh, my God. I just I just had a weird... I just had a weird theory. So, say Jasper and Alice had a child. And mm-hmm. um, she can see the future and he can manipulate emotions. What if the power was based on the emotions that could, could ter- determine the outcome? of a decision mm. and like she would like you, they could see the future of like what the emotion would bring so like if they were ha- if like a situation happened and they were happy then that outcome would happen but then say they got angry because of something and then it's like that would happen yeah i don't know so it's like showing them like um like what their decision in that moment would make yeah like what they because what alice did in 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 Breaking Dawn Part 2, she showed Arrow a version of what could happen, right? Yeah. She kind of did she kind of like manipulated that in a little a little bit, right? I was like, "Go, Alice." <laughs> she knew what she was doing, too. Cuz I think Stephanie Meyer did say that in the time that Jasper and Alice was away, she could have easily um worked on her power to make it evolve. Yeah, I could I could totally see that. Because, I mean, like, how long would it really take for her to find Nahuel? Let's see. He, they were and in she, Brazil. Um, it which, wasn't, which in Brazil don't, I mean, don't the Cullens have ties in Brazil? Yes. So, 
It must have been kind of pretty easy for them. Yeah, because it was mentioned... Because they had, um... Isle, like, Isle Esme was off the coast of Rio. And, um... Then the housekeepers had legends, especially, um, the female. She had legends of, um, vampires. And then I think even when... In the one scene where, um... Bella, Jacob, and Ness are catching snowflakes. Um, Bella mm-hmm. says Edward thinks we could find answers in Brazil. Mm-hmm. So it just makes it makes me wonder because I don't know if any of them went when they first gathered witnesses after Jasper and Alice left. I wonder if any of them did go to Brazil because I don't remember Bella saying that they ever did. No, yeah, they could. They went to eat. They went to Egypt. They went to. They went Egypt, to Denali. London, or wherever that one guy was. <laughs> they went to Ireland. They went mm-hmm. to... They went... Well, the Amazons came... The Amazonian coven came to them. Oh, but that's another thing. So maybe Alice and Jasper went straight to the Amazon coven because Kairichi went with them to go find Nahuel. Oh, that's possible. And I think it, it's very possible that they she could... Mm-hmm. That's why I'm like... I How I mean, from the moment that the Volatori that 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 um, no, I her name is blinking in my mind. That one chick who saw Renesme and went to go tattletale <laughs> to the Volatori. Um, oh. Yeah, her. Um, snitches how long get from that, stitches. For real, but how long from the moment that she told them to the like the battle was that? Do we have a timeline for that? Um, I think it would have been around, so I think the, the battle happened after Christmas, um, and then, so it was Christmas that they came, um, Mm -hmm. I think it may have been late October, early November, so about a month, because the Volturi needed to gather their witnesses, they weren't just gonna go straight to them and, um, like, massacre them they needed they needed to have proof so that they weren't doing it injustice yeah and i think that that's well more than enough time for alice to go find this guy and then practice her things because even bella i mean it took her that same amount of time to practice and strengthen her powers yeah to be able to protect like the entire like all the people that they had there yeah so that's definitely a possibility um, well, we're just about halfway, so I think I can get into my segment. Um, so for this week for my recommendation, if you guys don't know that there's an amazing um, um, cosplay group at the Olympic Coven on Instagram and on TikTok too, and they are amazing cosplayers who cosplay as all the members of the Cullens. They have a new Charlie. Um, they have... Um, they have literally everyone that I can think of. I'm like, they have everyone. Um, well, the, the girl who's cosplaying Bella, her account just kind of got hit with something. They took it down temporarily. Um, luckily she was able to get it back. So my recommendation this week is to go follow her Instagram account and show her some love. Um, cause she's an amazing, she's very supportive in the community. Um, she's so sweet, so nice. And she's very dedicated to, to um to the, doing this um cosplay for Bella it's like her business it's her craft um she's very yeah she takes amazing pictures her Instagram is at just Bella Swan the one and only the one and <laughs> at only. just Bella Swan um yes yeah, so we she we did we found out that she had just got it back late last night and she went live and it was a fun time but that is my recommendation to go follow her show her some love tell her you're you're happy she's back yeah. um. But yeah, that's it. <laughs> I love that. I love so, her. Yeah, she's amazing. She's so nice. She's super cool, too. She's so I'm funny. Like, I was, like, uh, intimidated by how cool she was at first. I was like, oh, my gosh. Like, Me she's too. so cool. But I get, it's I okay. Get very, I get very shy because I, when I, like, I first found out about the Olympic Coven, um, I followed, like, all of them. And I was very kind of like, oh, my God. Like, they're so cool. <laughs> Dude, and then they're, they're um... Like all of their characters, I feel are like splitting images of like the, yes. of like the actual characters. Like it's cr- so crazy. I I love them all. I would, 
I, 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 I cannot wait to hopefully meet them next year at Forks. I know. That's, that's going to be really fun. So, fingers crossed. That's amazing. We'll have a powwow. Um, we should jump into the world of Harry Potter right now. Because... Yes. Although they don't have, like, hybrids. They have some... They're, like, their own form. Yeah. Their own form of hybrids. So, the what the hybrid that we're talking about are the mug Or not the muggles. The mudbloods or that, that term. Um... Which that's a derogatory term um, for someone who has magical powers but was born to parents that don't. Um, yeah. Also is a person who is born of a family that includes both magical and non-magical persons. So like yeah. Harry, um, like, um, I guess Harry Potter wouldn't be considered a mudblood, would he? Because he, most of his... He's considered a half-blood because mm-hmm. his mom was a... Um, Mud blood was a mud blood, and then his father was a pure bread, pure blood. So I yeah. almost said bread like a freaking dog. My bad. So, <laughs> <laughs> so that's but another yeah. one. So we have we have mud blood, and then we have half blood. Yeah. Um. So think, those are. Go, go ahead. Oh. <laughs> I said go for it. You said go. <laughs> no, I was just saying that. Yeah, that that's what he was. Who were seven? I mean, we know that Snape was half blood. Yes. We know, we know that Harry Potter's mom, Lily, was a even, mudblood. Even, um, even he sh- who shall not be named, the Tom Riddle, the Voldemort, was a half-blood. That's why he was people all wanna, weird. Yeah. Well, well, no, people, we know it, but people in the actual universe, like, the Death Eaters don't want to have that conversation. Yeah, no. Because I mean, literally, in in, um, in Order of Phoenix, they, that's like all they were like trying to do was like take away people who are like mudbloods or like Muggleborn or whatever. Yeah. Um, something also we have um, Squib. Um, he's a person who was born to a witch and wizard, but they don't have any magical powers of their own. Yeah. Um, which kind of sucks. <laughs> I would be so mad to I- be born to. To magical poor, parents, I have no powers. Poor, um, what's his name? Um, I forgot his name. The guy that Fletcher? had grounds keep. Was it Fletcher? Oh, look, I have it here. Uh, Argus Filch. Filch. Oh my god, why did I yeah. say Fletcher? Fake fan over here. Just kidding. <laughs> Phil. Yeah, when I found that out, I was like, huh. That must be so sad to, you know, be born with two parents who are magical and then not but i wonder because he did have magical blood i wonder if he did have kids that it would Mm -hmm. pop up later in the bloodline that's why it makes me wonder if hermione's family actually did have like an ancestor who was magical and then a squib was born yeah that's it that's 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 what i was thinking because um like um i feel like mudbloods even though they're born to two parents who aren't i feel like somewhere down the line there was someone who who possibly yeah. was magical in their in their family. Um, but also, yeah, it says squib is this generally a result of mating outside of the witch wizard bloodline. So that just means like they did it excessively, I guess. But then I wonder if he were to marry and have kids with someone who was of magic, if their kids would be half half blood? Yeah. Something like that, right? And then we have all of our half-breed people, which are terms applied to someone who was born to parents of different species that can mate to produce viable offspring like giants and humans. Um, They take generally take properties of both parents that can be magical as well and have powers depending on what their parents were. So some iconic ones that we know of are Hagrid. His father's a human. His mother's a giant. Um, he's st- he's taller, stronger than most humans, but not as tall or stupid as a giant. Yeah, because we we meet so, his br- his half brother in um, Order of the Phoenix. Yeah, and that just makes me is it, I is um, Hagrid's mom stu- like since she was a giant test, is she was she also like how the brother was? I don't know. Because in that, like, the, the, that, that raises some flags. <laughs> that raises a lot of flags, especially with Hagrid's father. 
Yeah, that's what I'm like. Ooh, yeah, that, yikes. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if we want to get into that combo. I don't know. <laughs> but food for thought, in case anyone was wondering. J.K. That's Rowling, something to. Pl- J.K. Rowling, explain yourself. For real. <laughs> I mean, yeah, her, we can, I mean, we can do a whole podcast on her and Stephanie Meyer, too. Um, then we have Flitwick. Oh. He, yeah, I love him. He's so iconic. Um, love, uh, he had a great grandparent. I love him. Yeah, he had a great grandparent that was a goblin, making him shorter than most humans, but also more cunning and clever. And my favorite part is the part uh, on my, at the end. Oh, my gosh. What part is it? I forgot what movie it was, but something happened. And, oh, I think it was when, I don't know if, oh my gosh, I don't remember what happened, but they're, like, out in the courtyard area, and then, like, Flitwick is there, and he goes, like, yes. Oh, <laughs> oh that was, <laughs> that was Order of the Phoenix after the Weasley twins set off those fireworks mm-hmm. for Umbridge. Yes. Then he was there, he was like, yes. I love him so much. Iconic. And then we have Fleur Delacour. So she's actually a half breed. So her great, she had a grandparent that was a Vila, yeah. which is similar to a siren of Greek mythology, giving her the ability to enchant the minds of men as well as cast her witch charms, which is interesting because those are, that's why all the boys were all like, oh, over her. Yeah. They, um, ooh, I hit my mic. Oops. Um, yeah, and I think that's why Ginny and Mrs. Weasley didn't like her at first was because they didn't know if she truly loved, um, Bill or if she was casting, like, a spell under him. Yeah, to, like, love him, to to get him to love her. Yeah. That's, oh, that's cool. That, that's, that's interesting because, I mean, we don't really know that, right? (laughs) Um, but then that also makes me think, because then we have these half-breeds, like, what else can we, like... What else can, like, be half-breed in the Harry Potter world? Because there's so many other, like... Yeah. Like, magical creatures, you know? Yeah. I think it's definitely interesting because, um... Unlike with the Vampire Diaries, how they have, like, the vampire-werewolf, um... Hybrid. They don't have hybrids with werewolves in Harry Potter because of the way that, um the werewolf like how you become a werewolf is like you're not born one you are bitten and turned into one Mm -hmm. because that's how it was with lupin and lupin when he and tonks had their child their child didn't have like he didn't have anything with a werewolf nothing related i believe but he got instead he got his mom's metamorphosis um power Mm. because she was a metamorphosis so then um so then um I guess I, I don't really dive into, like, the like the history of Harry Potter as often as I do about, like, Twilight. But Sirius was... He was not a werewolf. He was a... What? Oh, so... Sirius... Sir, um, it was Sirius, Harry's father, um, James Potter. Then there was... Um, Wormtail, um, mm-hmm. the guy who betrayed Harry's parents, they were yeah. anim- they were animaguses. But so basically, they that's a kind of it's a um it's learned. Um, mm. There's like you have to like master these like spells and everything. I um where you can morph into a animal, and I think the animal is supposed to. Um, kind of represent who they are or Mm. kind of so when lupin because lupin was a werewolf he got bit at the age of five as revenge on his father by um i forget his name so every they when they all became friends that's when the three decided that they were going to try and master this in order to become animaguses so that during Lupin's transformation during the full moon because Lupin would not attack animals. He would, um, he wasn't as fierce or animalistic as he was with humans. Because mm-hmm. and so, by becoming animaguses, Lupin was more calm with them because he saw them as animals. He didn't see them as humans. It's very interesting. Yeah, 
So then that's something that's like a learned trait. It's not something that they have to, like they can pass down, which is something that I was wondering about too. Yeah. Um, but then we have all these other magical we have like the the centaurs of the forest. I yeah. mean like those are half big, man, half horse. They could easily mate with some someone yeah. or you something. Had, you had the mer people in the black lake. Yeah, especially yeah, but that's why I was, um, I guess, like, when, when I first watched it, I was expecting them to be, like, these beautiful creatures. But I guess it's more like their, like, siren-like, um, the voice. I guess, abilities to, to like, lure them in, right? Yeah, the song. Then we have purebloods, which I want to say at first aren't really, like, hybrids because it's, like, you hybrids is, like, when you mix. But then to me, it is kind of a hybrid because you're mixing, like... A witch and a wizard you know yeah to make something more more pure um and then that's like just that's just family wizard families that know mixing of blood with people who are not magical so examples are like the malfoys and the weasleys which i think it's so funny that the malfoys are always so like like down on the weasleys but like they're the same you know yeah. Even though, like, one's, like, more, like, rich or whatever. Yeah, I think it's because they call the Weasleys blood traitors because the way the Malfoys and the Black family were, were they did not agree with anybody. They did not support anybody who was not a pure blood. Whereas the Weasleys, they didn't care. They were very accepting of all beings. Yeah. So, which we love them. We stand them. Um... So this website I'm on is very official with uh, figuring out um, if you have both parents who are the idealized witch and wizard, the following results can be uh, obtained. So true pure blood, the probability for that, if both parents were the idealized witch or wizard, is one out of, uh, or is actually 0.10%. But then being a just regular pure blood would be 96.88%. And then to be a squib, it's only 3% that they have the option. So really feel bad for Filch because he was at 1-3%. Oh, poor Filch. Um, with both parents being muggles, the um, to they can't be pure blood at all. To be mud blood, it would be a 31%. And then to be a, just a regular muggle, 68%. So all those people who, I mean, the mudbloods are pretty lucky because they got the, that 31%. And then their yeah. fa- their families must know about about it, right? Because like, just like um, Lily's family, her parents knew about the wizarding world. And so did Hermione's, right? Yeah. They weren't like secret to it because they had to send their kid away to this boarding school. Yeah. And then the last one that's here is with one parent being a witch and the other one being a muggle. Um, they can't be true pure blood. They can be 60, 76% mud blood and 23% muggle. Which I which I see, I wish I feel like would also suck if one of my parents was a witch or wizard. And then I did not get any of that. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I would just be like, oh, seriously, like it had to skip me. I would be so sad. I'd be like, are you kidding me? Like, that's it. I quit. <laughs> <laughs> I quit. I quit. What's happening? Um, so, The Vampire Diaries, which is uh, which is another show that has hybrids in it. I I watched The Vampire Diaries. I don't watch any of their spinoffs because I never really got, like, that into it. So, I think maybe you're a little bit more versed on well, the Vampire Diaries world. More, I, I would say the originals. I did watch the originals. Uh-huh. I actually watched the originals first, and then I watched the Vampire Diaries because, <laughs> because this is what happened. When I have a obsession with a certain actor or actress, I like to watch all of their works. Mm-hmm. And so, Isaac, Sh- no, not Isaac, Daniel Sharman, who played Isaac in Teen Wolf, was on season three of the originals. So then. I loved him. I wanted to see um, what he did in this um, show, and then I fell in love with the show, and then I was like, oh, I gotta watch The Vampire Diaries now, because I love the originals. That's why I love The Michelson Family. I'm more biased toward The Michelson Family, because I watched The Mm -hmm. Originals first. I have not watched Legacies, 
so I have not watched that. I just couldn't get into Legacies. I couldn't. I I I watched some of the originals, but then I feel like I started getting super busy, so I never like really like continued it. But I know of of I know of it. Um, so obviously we know that hybrids are a crossbreed between two or more different supernatural species. So in um in the vampire diary world we know of witches werewolves and vampires but i don't think that we know of anything else like any other Um, magical beings there were in the last in we've got also vampire i mean hunters which are like hunters of the supernatural because they also have supernatural abilities despite being Mm -hmm. mortal um you've got there is, I believe, in season seven, there it was either season seven or just beginning of eight. You've got um, sirens. They did introduce sirens. Um, they also had Lucifer. I don't know if you can count him as a demons. They had demons. Yeah. So, I think those are the only mystical being I can think of. Yeah. So here uh, we know that there's werewolf vampire hybrids, um, which I think is might might be one of the first ones that we that we really know about because that's when Klaus turns um, what's his face Tyler his his blood right yeah. is that like the first really instance that we see of that yeah so um, so yeah. by doing that you uh, in Klaus the in the van- out. Yeah, that's when, yeah, that's, I guess, was that his, like, tester to be, like, oh, hey, like, this can happen. Like, we'll figure out what yeah. happens. Yeah. Klaus is considered the first hybrid because, um, he was, when he, because, like, um, vampire, and then when he found out that his father was actually a werewolf, that's when he did the spell or whatever to unlock his werewolf gene and become the first hybrid so then tyler became like his his experiment to figure out if he can turn others yes and then and then um so to turn them you have to feed them your blood and then kill them yes right so that's what klaus did um it says that no regular vampire has ever attempted to use their own blood to turn a werewolf into a hybrid. Um, so then... Let me see. It says that after a werewolf dies with Klaus, Klaus's blood in their system, the transformation will be successful only if the wolf completes his or her transition by drinking the blood of a human doppelganger. So who was that so human? Elena. Elena, Yeah. Um, if a werewolf it was, was Elena, turned, because Catherine was already vampire. Yeah. So um, so so far all the hybrids have been created by Klaus. Is he the only ones who can create hybrids? I think. He, see, I don't know. I don't know. I can't remember if Haley ever did create a hybrid. I know. Um. Because there's another there's another hybrid species that we'll probably get into um, in a bit, but for werewolf vampire, I don't I don't think anybody else did. I think it's only Klaus. Yeah, good. Well, yeah, because he's do. I remember he he started doing turning people left and right out of like spite, kind of like he was just like killing people and doing his his thing, you know. <laughs> Um, oh, Klaus. Our f- I know. So, yeah. So, Tyler Lockwood was the first... Well, not the first, but the first one turned by Klaus. Um, he, is a, he, already, he was already a werewolf. Um, and then he... And then that's when and he turned him. Um, then we... So, let me see. Let me scroll. Because this website has, like, tons of stuff on the Vampire Diaries. I'm like... It keeps going and going and going. Um, do we? Um, we do know that the the Michelson family, their mom was a witch. Yes. And their dad had had werewolf genes. So then that means that all the, are all the Michelsons witch 
vampire werewolf hybrid? No, so they have mad so um Klaus is the only one that is a part werewolf because he is the only offspring between um Esther and his biological father. All the mm, other yes. kids. Oh, you're like unlocking like memories in my brain. Yeah. So he's <laughs> he's the only one with werewolf gene. They do they don't they're not um they would have been witches basically b- because um what happened was Esther was a witch and when she had her kids they all would have inherited a magical gene but they would have had to have unlocked it so like Cole I think Cole and Freya Freya was um raised by her sister um but Cole was able to actually had shown interest in learning magic and practicing it so Cole when he was when they were human Cole had been able to become like a wit like a witch wizard but when Esther after their one son had died and she didn't want to lose any more kids that's when she turned them into vampires but by doing Mm. that it took out all being able of them wanting to be witches they do have magical blood because vampires were created by magic so it's like they have magical blood but they can't actually physically practice it now in hope's case hope is klaus and Haley's daughter Mm -hmm. she she's a special case because of the fact that both of her parents were vampire werewolf hybrids and vampire um the vampire you know had magical blood in them she got she's a special case where she was able to unlock her magical ability and actually practice it so she's the first tribrid with um It's not possible for someone who's already a vampire to be a witch. So, like, if Bonnie was turned, she could she'd lose her um, magic. But, but like Kai. So Kai was um, a a siphon, and we learn about the siphons in season six or seven. I think it was six. And a siphon was someone who was born into a magical family but they didn't have magic they could only get magic if they absorbed it from someone who was magical which in turn Mm. would hurt the person they were absorbing the magic from but we learn that if a siphon is bit by a vampire then they become a heteric because because the vampires were created by magic and have magical blood they're siphoning that magical that magic in the blood therefore si- people who were siphons turned vampires can practice magic which makes them probably the more deadliest of the hybrids in the vampire diaries. yeah that that would be crazy because i'm um like if bonnie because bonnie would just lose her powers but they get to like keep it yeah right because- yeah, because Bonnie was already, like, a practicing witch. She had her magic. She could practice it. Kai and the other siphons could not practice magic unless they absorbed it from someone who was magical. So. Yeah, and then, um, so then Hope. Um, I did watch, I, I, I did know, know a little bit about Hope. She, her mom is a werewolf. Yeah. Is she also a vampire? No. Right? Haley was born she- a werewolf, but then Klaus turned her into a hybrid. Okay. So then that that kind of takes out the question that these that in this world vampires can still have babies. Um, only if they're a wolf hybrid. They, um mm. so what happened well with Haley's case, Haley was still a werewolf. Um, when she got pregnant with Hope because um, Klaus is half wolf, half vampire, so he's able to impregnate another female who is a wolf and probably if she were human. So Haley, um, being that she was a wolf, they were able to conceive Hope, but she died during childbirth. She was kind Mm -hmm. of actually murdered during it with the whole witches and everything. But Klaus had fed her his blood, and then... Um, so she... Yeah, so she she, she... she turned into it. 
I feel like I need a. I feel like I need to restart um, the vam- the whole Vampire Diary stuff because I feel like I'm like. Oh, hold on, hold on. Yeah. Because I think. Um, hold on. Out of my computer's my p- computer's giving me a. A warning. Uh, my computer's giving me a warning. Oh, there we go. Yeah, it's like uh, your computer's about to restart, and I'm like, mm, that would not be cool. Uh, but I think it said like in like an hour, um, so I think we're good. But um, I, yeah, if I was saying, I feel like I need to restart rewatching all the Vampire Diary stuff because I feel like I'm so out of the loop on it. So much has happened. I think I feel like yeah. So I need, um, I need to rewatch it too. So um, I I've never really watched True Blood. I've watched some of it. Like I'm not like really like that into true blood because when i guess when it was out it was like a little too graphic right but they also have like they have a fairy vampire hybrid it says i've never watched the show either but that sounds interesting so their powers are they have extendable fangs um they have enhanced healing factor human Superhuman endurance, superhuman strength, superhuman sense, of superhuman speed, glamouring, tele- telepathy, photokinesis, um, teleportation, portal creation, flight, and daywalking. That's the fairy vampire hybrid in True Blood. Ooh. I think True Blood's on, what, Hulu? It might be. I might have to check it out. I wasn't allowed to watch it when I was young because graphic. But yeah, me either. <laughs> now that I'm older. Um, so it says here that um, for centuries in the True Blood world, they was thought that such a combination could not exist. And the main reason is that vampires find fairy blood so delicious that they would be unable to stop themselves from killing the fairy before they could complete the turning. So, yeah. But it happened. Oh. And I don't know if there's any other. Uh, the, my search of hybrid, hybrids in True Blood. That's the only one that came out besides, um, besides halfling. I guess a person who's like half vampire, half, um, half human. But then I'm seeing here also the, or what is a halfling? Let me see. Let me click on click on that. Oh no! Actually, the half the halfling would be the half fairy, half human. Or in half fairy, half vampire. Yeah. So they don't have half it. The human half human thing is not, not a thing in the, in the true blood world. They're just like full vampire or, fairies and stuff like that. Hmm. I might have to possibly. Go. If there's any true blood fans watching and we're like completely wrong, I'm think, so sorry. I think Liz is Liz. Um, Help us out. Liz, if you're listening, if you're watching this, can you give us 101 on True Blood? Please. Um, but other than that, are there any other hybrid hybrids that we didn't get to that you can think of? Um, in Percy Jackson, you have demigods. So <gasps> yes, God. Percy Jackson. <laughs> that so, was the one thing. So um, I, I love Percy Jackson, but I'm also like not... I guess you're the... True, you're the the vampire diaries and the Percy Jackson, and I'm like <laughs> Twilight and some Harry Potter. <laughs> I, I haven't re- I I need to reread Percy Jackson. I haven't read those books in a long time. I'm so excited for the live action show that they're gonna do because after we're not gonna talk about that movie. <laughs> <laughs> I so. Of course, you got the demigod, so half god, half human, where um, one of the gods impregnated a... Well, either the god, male god impregnated the human or the female god was impregnated by a human male. Yeah. Um, So, there's also not... It's related to Greek mythology, but it's not... um, In Percy Jackson, we don't... I don't think we see it. We did. We did see Medusa... But we mm-hmm. didn't, um, when, because in the Greek mythology, when Medusa died, she was pregnant with Poseidon's kids, and she gave birth to, I forget who 
I know she gave birth to a Pegasus, which is a half horse, half bird. Um, yeah. And then she also, I forget who else. She had like another child that was also a hybrid of, um, I think it was in part animal and then part human. Um, mm-hmm. There's also, a, you've got sirens, you've got... Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I pulled it up here on my phone so we could um, see this. Um, so human hybrids of ancient Greece. These are just like ancient Greek stuff. Um, let me go to where they... Oh, you got fawn, which is a half goat, mm-hmm. half human. Um, so we have here, we have a gorgon, which is half human, half serpent. Um, I'm not sure if we see this in the Percy Jackson world, but I guess the Greek mythology type stuff is, like, related. Yeah. Then we have, um, a dry dryad, which is half human, half tree. What um, the? <laughs> I know. I'm like, <laughs> I've never seen it. Oh, harpy. We do see harpies, I think, in the in Percy Jackson, which half human, half bird. Oh, yeah. Um, That's like the, the first lady that came and like took him yeah. away in the movie You've or got, wanted to fight him. Yeah. You got centaur, which is the half man, half horse. Yes. And then we have the minotaur, which is the half human uh, bull, which is the one that came to like attack percy to right before he got to the camp yeah we have a. Uh, uh i'm not sure if we see this oh i feel like i remember seeing it somewhere but it's a half human half snake Ooh. like half um, the body is a, a, a human and the other one's a snake um we have a, a satyr i think so half human goat is what you were talking about right yeah um which is like percy jackson's like best friend that's his like He's a satyr, right? Yeah. And we also see that in The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. <laughs> oh, I love Narnia. <laughs> I love Narnia. But I feel like he's the only one that we really see that's like... In, in, that, in that movie, The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, he's the only half-human, half-goat person that I've seen. Yeah. Then we have a sphinx, which is human, a lion, and an eagle. Um... I don't think we see it in Percy Jackson, but I, in, you know, mythology, we see that. Yeah. And then, obviously, the siren, which we had said earlier, which is a human slash fish, but really just like a mermaid. Yeah. Right? Yeah. They just, uh, pretty your name for it. So, that's like the Greek mythology, um, Greek mythologies. Let me see if I put hybrids in Percy Jackson. It's pretty much the same. I A lot of them are like the same, but... Yeah. Let's see if they have any, um, oh, I think this is the, this is on Wattpad. Oh, <laughs> someone gosh. did a, someone did a, a fanfic of Percy Jackson being a vampire werewolf hybrid. Ooh. <laughs> I, oh my God. I love fanfiction. I love what people come up with. Ooh. Okay. So this is going away. This is just going away from the, um, going away from percy jackson real quick because i just mm-hmm. thought of another hybrid this is in my book series fallen which is about fallen angels mm-hmm. so they have um i think let me look it up i forget what they're called but they do have it's in like the second book they introduce the school which has people who have angel blood so like they're part angel part human some of them are half angel half human or they're like descendants of an angel who mated with a human and then they have angel blood in them. Mm. Well, um, angels. I feel like there was something I watched where they were angels. I'm like, where did I watch something where they were? It's about angels and it was like that. I don't know. I feel like I'm. Oh, maybe it's- I'm it's called a Nephilim. Ne- nef- nephilim. I think they also call it in other um, fantasies. It's just I, I can't say it that well, but it's ha- it's like ain't part angel, half angel, nel nephilim. So um, to, does like the half human, half angel? Are they like less powerful than the like if someone were like a full angel? Yeah. Um. Cause I think so. Like 
um, in Fallen, in the second book, where she's at the academy where that has... Because, like, the, the academy, to, like, not make it look suspicious, it also has people who are human attending the school, but they're separated from the people who are, like, have angel blood. So those, the people who are Nephilim, they kind of have, like, they don't have wings, but they have, um, it's like they, they're, they're very, you know, beautiful, they're charismatic, they have the characteristics, they just don't have, um, like, the powers, because, mm-hmm. um, some angels, I think, because, like, in Fallen, and not, in, I don't know if it's in Fallen, but, um, in Hush Hush, the angels have the ability to, like, manipulate the mind and, like, read thoughts. So, mm-hmm. the, it's different in all different literature of angels, but in Fallen, they don't, um, they don't have those powers, but they are very intelligent, charismatic, and, um, beautiful. Yeah. Wow. I still, I I really need to read that book. I need to get it, but I'm trying to like, I have like a bookshelf of books that I need to finish reading that I'm like, I can't even get to. Um, I was going to say that, um, with all this talk today, I've been like thinking about, um, like in Harry Potter, we have wizards and werewolves, but we don't, we don't really hear about vampires. And then in Twilight, we have like werewolves and vampires, but we never really hear about witches or stuff like that. It just makes me think about... Like, in these worlds, like, where I'm obviously the, the the authors are people who, like, create them and kind of come up with the rules. But I wonder just, like, in either world, like, what other, like, uh, supernatural beings besides the ones that we already know of, like, are possible. Because, like, in Harry Potter, it's literally, like, every single one except for vampires. Yeah. And then in, like, Twilight, it's literally just vampires and werewolves that we know of. Yeah. It just makes me think about what like, the possibilities that... The, that that we could like is are we just living in a vampire like werewolf world like that makes like that makes it a little hard to believe (laughs) yeah i i don't know that's like like i don't know not that it's like boring just to have like werewolves and vampires but i feel like if you're gonna have werewolves and vampires like there has to be something else you know yeah that huh because kind of like in, in, um, in Harry Potter, like, they don't have vampires, but they have literally every other single creature that you could think of. Yeah. <laughs> and then in the Vampire Diaries, they have witches, werewolves, and, and, and vampires. Yeah. And, and hunters. Like, they added this extra little... Yeah. And then with, like, Fallen and Hush Hush, it's just strictly angels. Like, angels yeah. and demons. Because it's more... Um, because th- those are more rooted in christianity and Mm -hmm. the whereas we don't really see that in like you i don't there have been some i think works that have involved angels with other um fan like fantasy species but the like the two that i'm i've been reading is just strictly limited to that because yeah i would just i would just love to see a book where like there was literally like every single supernatural being ever you could think of was actually real and they all coexisted in this world with humans and like they knew about each other you know yeah i kind of (laughs) if i can get my brain in going and actually write books because i have all of these ideas i would probably want to have a book like that well i me me and my friend started writing a book a couple years ago and it's similar to that but then we kind of stopped and I was like recently like I was like I really want to start writing again because really we didn't we didn't even get into the writing process we got we were like all in the planning process because yeah. I'm the type of person who can't just like sit down and write like I need to have things planned out oh yeah because what if I get to a part in the book and I'm like oh my gosh like I have to explain this and how am I going to explain it you know yeah so. I, I like because I've I've done fan fiction in the past gonna admit yeah and so (laughs) i would especially like with whatever it was i would do a lot of research on um what i was like doing especially especially with something like this if fantasy if i was if i was to write a book about angels i would have to definitely like read history about angels and the roots in order to accurately portray and then same with vampires try to get like because some, you know, different legends have it starting different. Some legends different are in ways, 
summer in Egypt. In Egypt, and um, also I'm someone who has to like, I have music. Like I don't, I like Stephanie Meyer. I completely get it because <laughs> she talks about how like she has to like certain songs inspired as she, she was writing, and I, that's mm-hmm. me. Like if I hear a song, I'm like, oh, this would sound really good in this type of scene. Yeah, for real. Well, I mean, um, my friend. I don't know if my friend wants to write the book anymore because it was kind of like my idea. Her and I were just kind of like we were in a show together and we were. Um, like just like kind of messing around backstage but we have like lit like a whole like google document you could hop on this project too we'll we'll write a book together (laughs) yo honestly oh one of the cards i pulled was inspiration uh, and honestly and friendship and friendship (laughs) you know and neptune is about to end its retrograde cycle which i am just ready for because Nep- for all okay for all y'all who are interested in astrology especially because like we talked about it in our last episode um neptune is the planet of imagination creativity dreams and inspiration and when isn't it when it's in retrograde it just throws everything off you have like no creative outlet you have no creative inspiration and all that and just in a funk and i've definitely been in that the past several several weeks because me too so i'm ready i think tomorrow no today i think it's actually today that neptune is not supposed to be in retrograde anymore and i'm like oh please let me thank the universe i know we can totally i mean we need all we talk about the time so we can just hop on this together we can i'll show you all the ideas i think that what we had in mind and maybe your maybe your mind can kind of like um like freshen up some of the ideas because there's some things that I was stuck on like what are we gonna do and my friend Holly's like the the type of person to be like well this duh but she's always so busy she's like uh she's like writes fan fiction all that stuff too so and she's in theater so we she never has time but um I want to say that it, it was like a perfect blend of like Twilight and the Vampire Diaries and um and Percy Jackson and all these different things kind of coming together so we'll we'll talk we'll talk later but speaking of books I think it's time for your segment (laughs) so I'm gonna mute myself (laughs) (laughs) okay hey guys it's Ree here welcome to another um segment of Ree's weekly read and I would try and show Mare that I can say it five times fast because she asked me one time, can you say that five times fast? Cause, and then she tried it and <laughs> it didn't work. Um, so I actually don't have a book with me, but because this episode was inspired by fantasy and that's a big part of the literature that I read all the time, I mean, Twilight, Harry Potter, Percy Jackson, all that, I am going to say for my weekly read any book series that involves fantasy I would recommend and encourage you guys to read because I mean it's like TV in your head and you get attached to these characters I mean um Hush Hush Fallen I've already mentioned those two Harry Potter whatever is like your favorite type of fantasy work so if you like angels then Hush Hush and Fallen if you like vampires then Twilight, Vampire Diaries, because the Vampire Diaries is a book series. Um, witches, you got Harry Potter, you want demigods, you got, um, or just Greek mythology in general, you got the um, Percy Jackson series. So I would rec- I those are going to be all of my weekly read for this week because. Read all of them. <laughs> read all of them. They're all good in their own special way. And. Um, who knows? You might find yourself lean more toward one than the other. So. I like books that'll make me cry. <laughs> yes. Oh my gosh. Okay. I still need to finish Hush Hush. I'm not done yet. Um, but Fallen, that made me cry by the end of it. Harry Potter sobbed. Twilight. Oh, Twilight oh, yeah, got me sure. in that last line. Okay. Even if I have it. If I just want to feel like crying, I will flip all the way to the last two pages of Breaking Dawn and read those. Because it just... Oh. 
Yeah. So read whatever you like this week. Yes. Um, I have on my bookshelf, I have a plethora of books from like the Cheetah Girls to Fifty Shades of Grey. So. (laughs) And also, if you are wanting to buy books, this is just a little like, um, not, (laughs) not sponsored. But if you are, (laughs) um, if you are wanting to stock up on some books for an affordable price, I would highly recommend going to Better World Books or thriftbooks.com because you can get some pretty good deals on books. There, A lot of them are used, but um, they are in good condition. Like I, over the summer, I bought 10 books from Better World Books. Each time I spent like, I think $15 on five books. One time I spent $8 because I was able to get some good deals. And some of them you might, I would recommend reading because they have different ones listed. So definitely read the description because some might be used library books. Some might have been donated. And um, yeah, I, t- I totally recommend that. Also always going to like um, like I, like Goodwill or um, thrift stores. They always have books there. And I've like made a vow to myself that anytime I go to a Goodwill or a thrift store or something like that that any and anytime i see a twilight book i'm gonna rescue it yes so (laughs) i basically i basically got um half of my twilight collection is like used books yeah most of all of mine too um i was just missing well right now i have two twilight books i have uh one life and death that i have not read yet um um, and then I have two new moon books. Um, the one new moon book is from like a Goodwill. The other one is actually from a, um, half price books that I went to in San Antonio and it's actually the movie cover version <gasps> and it has a movie poster in the back that has not been torn out or anything. It's like mint condition. Oh my gosh. Um, I love that. and then I have, uh, Eclipse and Breaking Dawn that I both rescued from, um, a Goodwill or thrift store. So go to your local good, Goodwill or thrift store and rescue some of the books because sometimes they just need a, like, a little... I mean, they're just sitting on my thing here, but they're loved. <laughs> yes. And, you know, that gives a character. It gives a character, yeah. I'm assuming my entire bookshelf is going to be full of the same Twilight books, but yeah. my goal now that I have all the books is to start doing all the special editions. Um, yeah. I want to so, get um I want to get the Twilight book co- books with the movie covers. Mhm. Yeah, I have one so far. Oh, actually no, I have two. I have mm-hmm. Twilight and I have New Moon. So now I need Eclipse and Breaking Dawn. I so. I'm on a there hunt. I kind of want to go looking for like thrifting and see if I can find a first edition of Twilight. You might be able to. I really want to. My the only first edition book I have is of course Midnight Sun. So I really, yeah. <laughs> really want a first edition of Twilight. Even if I it's love... all even if it's all beat up, I don't care. I just I want like ah oh, this came out in two thousand five. I love the there's this one picture I saw of this of this person who put all of their first edition books like all together and all of the books are like like Eve like she had New Moon or Twilight, New Moon, Life and Death, like all those and all first editions are all like broken, kind of like beaten up a little bit, and then Midnight Sun just there, like all nice and clean, <laughs> yeah. pristine. It's just so, so sweet to think about. Yes. Well, with that being said, that is the end of the episode. So I hope you enjoyed uh, this hybrid talk and kind of we're diving into other worlds here. I really but, like um, this one. Yes, I love this, this one a, too. This was a fun episode too. We've had some good, yeah, I love it. We have, oh, we have no. some we have some good topics lined up also for the next couple episodes. <laughs> um, but next, if you're if you were like, hey, you guys didn't talk enough about Twilight this time, um, don't worry because next episode will literally only be about Twilight, where we talk about the future of Seth and Leah, and Twilight controversies. So, so disclaimer. Please come to with an open mind. Everybody's going to have different opinions about certain <laughs> subjects. <laughs> and maybe stay for some tea. Because this might be, maybe if you didn't know about it, this might be new to you. So we might open your mind. And that episode's coming on December 14th. So don't forget to go 
Uh, I mean, if you're watching on YouTube, like and subscribe. If you're listening on Spotify, maybe like, I don't know. I don't know if there's like a heart option or favorite or share to someone that you think might like the podcast. Ooh, wait, hold on. Let me see the 14th. <laughs> what day is that? Is that a special day? No, I was going to say because that's... um. That's going to be the episode before Christmas because we're not going to have a ne- an episode that next week. So should we come in Christmas hats? Totally. Yeah. I think so. so yeah. That'll be our Christmas special. Christmas special. <laughs> I'm gonna. We're gonna send presents to each other and we're gonna open them on camera. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> should we do that? Let's let's do let, it. Let, Whatever. Let's do. Let's do it. <laughs> okay, that's happening. <laughs> so next episode, guys, come wearing your Christmas gear uh and uh, yeah just we're gonna be all christmas out i'll have decorations up it'll be so much fun and make sure you guys go follow us on instagram at the bite podcast rr um all of that stuff okay <laughs> all right well we'll see you guys later bye <laughs>